This is the cheapest Audi S3 I could find. The seller told me it had lots of upgrades and makes 300 horsepower. Today, I've got 1,000 pounds plus the 750 remaining from my original 3,000 pound budget to buy the car. I'll need to modify this old Audi S3 to give it the best chance on the quarter mile drag strip. Although the mods I've chosen will end up making this one of the hardest projects I've ever worked on. Before I spend even more money on it, let's see if the seller lied. To get a baseline power figure, we brought the S3 down to Horsham Developments for a dyno run. Now, one of the main reasons that I'm doing this is because the seller of the car told me that he put an upgraded ECU, basically the thing that tells the car how much power to make, but he has no idea where it came from or what's on it. So the car might be trying to blow itself up. And this dyno run should hopefully tell us if it is or isn't. I haven't driven it, but I'm gonna have a guess on what it sounds like. Okay. From behind, it sounds like 280 horsepower. I think I think it's around 275, but I'm gonna say minimum 250. Yes! Yes! 246! 246. If you're American, you might go, <laughs> my view motor makes that at night. <laughs> yeah, but this is a little S3. So if I can get a bit more power, take a bit of weight out, well, you're done for. Thoughts? Comes on to boost quite aggressively, fairly lean. Would definitely do with a, a custom remap rather than an off the shelf map. Okay. Room for improvement. Yeah, definitely. Okay. Mm. Let's put some mods on this thing. 250 horsepower isn't bad, but it's not gonna be enough to beat Will and his BMW 335, because that is making near 400 horsepower. So we've got two options really, make more power and have less weight. And that is the aim of the game today. This car, as I explained in the intro, has already been modified. Someone has put a cheap eBay, but hybrid turbo on it, so it should have enough to make power. And the engine has been forged, so it should be strong enough to take that power. But there are a few things stopping it. Now the entire thing with making power with cars is allowing the car to either breathe more effectively or put more power in. So we're already trying to put enough power in, that's fine, but it can't breathe as well as it should. First things first, we've got that big intake. That's fine, that's not an issue. The intake sends power through to the turbo. Now the turbo, that's making enough power, we're all good there. That then comes out of the turbo, comes along this pipe. These pipes are big enough to make enough power, but the original intercoolers on these S3s are little side mounted pods here. They aren't efficient enough to keep the temperatures down and make the right power. So that's one of our first things we're gonna to need to do. We're gonna to need to put a big front mount intercooler. The other part is the back side of the turbo, the part where the exhaust gases come out the engine and spin the turbo up. The manifold itself, which sends the gases into the turbo is the original one. And they're known for being quite restrictive and stopping flow. So we're gonna replace that manifold with a freer flowing one which again should allow it to exit quicker. Colder intake air in, quicker exiting exhaust gases at the back, cooler intake temperatures at the front, more power. The second thing is weight. Now, here's just an easy calculator online. You can put in the brake horsepower and the weight of something, and it will give you the brake horsepower per ton. And with that number, you can basically very roughly work out match to match with another car, what their performance is like. So if we put in Will's car, 16, 15 kilos, Will, you're yeah, on board with that? that? He's making 247 horsepower per ton. This car weighs 1375 kilos. And right now we're making 250 horsepower. So we're at 181. That is nowhere near good enough. If we can increase our power to 300 horsepower, we bump it up to 218. Better, but still not good enough. If we can take 100 kilos out of the car, 1275, we're starting to get closer and closer. Maybe we make a bit more than 300. Maybe we make 330. And there we start getting to the magic number. If we can take as much weight as we can out of the car, over 100 kilos is the goal, and increase the power by 60 to 70 horsepower, we might be in with a chance of beating Will. So to make this test accurate, we weighed the S3 before doing anything to it. The news isn't good. I weigh 1,422 kilos, but I think there's weight to come out. We also have, what am I doing? A boot full of spares. Take the battery out. You just lost 15 kilos. What else we got? Let's take all of this stuff out. Right, that's the pile. Would you like the news? 1398. 24 kilos. If we can drop 100 kilos, up some power, we've got a chance. So before we go any further, the S3 is on a trailer. We'll get to that later. But this is a quick reminder that if you're buying a used car, you should always run a car vertical check. Every single day, hundreds of cars get crashed, stolen, or clocked like this Audi S3. And some of them get put back on the road in an attempt to hide their dodgy history. With a car vertical report, you can find out their shady past. All you need to do is enter your reg number or your VIN, and a car vertical report will tell you if that car has been crashed, stolen, or clocked. Now this Audi S3 says that it has 150,000 miles 
but in reality it has more like 200. It's been clocked and Car Vertical tells us that. There's a yellow warning for odometer. When we click and scroll down, it shows us there's been a mileage rollback earlier in its life. Around 50,000 miles disappeared off this car. And because of that, when I went to buy the car, I offered him a little bit less money. Now for an even worse example, my granddad sent me a suspiciously cheap DB9 for sale. It was like 15 grand. I had a look at the ad and it said it had been painted recently. A little bit suspect. No other mention of any other damage other than maybe it needs a diff. So I ran a car vertical report on it. Now bear in mind the car is black. On a car vertical report, not only have we got a yellow marker for damage, that is a red car with gold wheels. Currently for sale, that car is black with silver wheels. And if we keep scrolling down, it says this vehicle was damaged three times. Once in 2009, another time in the middle, and then again in 2019. So without running this car vertical report, he'd have had no idea because the seller was being a liar. Now, if you see this car for sale looking in pristine condition with a car vertical report, you can find out this shady past. So if you're ever buying a car, van, motorbike, or a really dodgy Audi S3, make sure that you run a car vertical check to make sure that the price you pay for it matches its history. And as an added bonus, Car Vertical have offered you guys 20% off when you use code TDC. So Edwin, back to the Audi. Back to the studio. Hello, mate. Oh. <laughs> oh, come on. Come on. <laughs> After finally getting the over-torqued bolts off, it was time to start on what would usually be a fairly simple job, removing and replacing the exhaust manifold. But on this car, there was one thing that would make that very tricky. Up there is where the uh, turbo is, and there's simply no space because usually in a 180T, there's no drive shaft here. But we have a big old drive shaft going back to send all of that huge power to the back wheels. I didn't look up the process before this morning. Most people say to take the top half of the engine off. They say take the head off. Because then that way, I can take the manifold off. I can replace it with a new manifold. I can make sure I can torque up the bolts. Let's get the car down, tear the engine apart. Little did I know that this decision would mean that this car project would become one of the worst I'd ever worked on. So get ready to watch this little old Audi almost break me. Hello, mate. Little diddy in the cooler, same on the other side. So these guys, they've got to go, that's why I took the front bumper off first. Which makes more space, make it nice for us to work. Now, we can get to start removing things from the, uh, from the engine bay. So that's what we did, and before long, the old intercoolers were out. Oh, oh, we got it. Look how small this guy is. That's not cooling us enough. Hello, the second intercooler. Oh, oh, oh hold on. It's like I, I'm, I've just discovered some honey. Don't want that in your intercooler. Is it semi-normal? You'd have you some, not but not that much. Engine stripped, it was time to take the head off. Oh, hello, come on. You may be wondering why the hell I've taken the entire top of the head off of the engine just to get at this manifold. These manifold nuts are fine on the bottom if you could get to them, which you can't, but you could probably find a way. I'm sure there are people in the comments right now furiously saying, I've actually taken the whole engine out without even removing the engine before. You're actually really shit. Shut up. What you can't see though is these ones here, these inner ones, they can't come off the manifold as it sits right now. You have to undo the manifold and move the manifold back with the nuts in order to get them out. And now imagine doing that up inside the back of the engine. For me at least, with these metal hands, it's not happening. We then noticed something a little worrying. So off camera, I just went over there to get some bolts and Will went, why don't you undo that cam cap? Walked over to find this. Just the one though mechanic. There's a reason that you leave cam cap on number five undone. With the previous owner's mistake fixed, we moved on. But some of you may have noticed our epic new TDC branded tool chest in the background of our recent videos, which we were provided by Factory Image Racing. They supplied us this tool chest, but not only that, they made these custom decals. That's cool. That is cool. We've put a link in the description. If you use code TDC at checkout when you're buying a toolbox from them, they'll include some custom decals that you can have on your own toolbox. Thank you very much, Factory Image Racing. We will take good care of it. Let's have a look at our head gasket. Don't worry too much about this oil. That's gonna be stuff from when we removed the head. No, it's fine, it's fine, it's fine. We don't, we don't need to worry about it. Look at your head gasket, you can tell some things. If you've got a split between here, you've got a blown head gasket and you're leaking compression between cylinders. Or you can lose it out the side as well on our Golf that we rebuilt on previous the channel name, unnamed. We had that as well, which is why when we were turning it over, it was going out the side. But this guy, he's pretty new, he looks pretty fine. 
nothing too bad. But then we noticed something that was really quite bad. Hmm. What a valve smasher. Hmm. The previous owner mentioned that he had the head off and he had rebuilt the head and put rods in it. That always makes you wonder why. And perhaps this might be the reason. Just a little glancing blow of a valve on the top there. So sometimes you'll see on pistons that you buy, if the valves on the pistons tend to come very close, they'll sometimes make a little divot in the piston just so there's a bit more relief. I'm pretty sure this has been run a bit too much. I can't see any signs of any contact on the valves themselves. Maybe the timing slipped on the engine. Valves come down, hit the top of the piston, bent a valve and hurt the piston. And instead of changing the piston, he's just left those there, threw some new valves in it, built the rest of the head, in it goes. It's a mechanic. Day in, day out, he's doing this. He is certified as a mechanic. And there we go. Oh, well, well, well. Can we see a huge crack in the middle of the collector there and a big old crack there? Here is its replacement. This might look quite nice, but I'd like to refer you to this, your Chinesium. This is the good stuff. This is probably just as likely to crack as that, maybe even more so, but for now, it's gonna be new and fresh and it's probably gonna make some more power because it's a bit more efficient at flowing. This is supposedly equal length. How? Weight reduction. Much better. I have now fully installed this manifold and at every moment that I did this, I was happy in the knowledge that I'd taken the head off this car. Again, there's gonna be so many comments. You didn't need to take that. You could remove the internals of the engine through the oil filter housing. I don't care. What I can now do is I can flip the head over and I can give this mating surface a bit of a clean up, clean the head on the top, whack that guy back together. Mating surfaces cleaned and prepped, I was stuck waiting on engine parts. So it was time to do the only other thing I could do to make this car faster, remove as much weight as possible. That is some weight savings. That's the spare. Michael Jackson? Wait, you get... This is good. There we go. That's a weighty guy. What does it sound like? Sounds like there are CDs in there. What sort of CDs they sound like? Now that's what I call music 40. <laughs> Robbie Williams. <laughs> Hello, mate. You're being too ham-fisted. You need to imagine you are a mechanic. Oh, I'm a mechanic? Yeah. That worked, actually. That did actually work quite well. Oh, that's got some heft to him. Interior fully stripped, my parts had arrived, so I got back to work on the engine. I've stolen Kyle, and this has cost me nothing because technically Rory hired Kyle for the day and I've stolen him, so that doesn't need to go in my budget. Brand new head gasket, it's time for the head. Hoo -yah! Look at that. There is something to note here. This is a eBay Chinese manifold with an eBay Chinese turbo. So we've got a mismatching Chinese part number one and a mismatching Chinese part number two. Maybe they communicated that though. Back in China. Maybe they said, you're doing the manifold? Cool, I'll jump on the turbo. We'll make sure those fit. And this is where Edwin ran into his first massive issue. That's not there. The two cheap Chinese components shockingly didn't match up at all. But seeing as the location of the head was non-negotiable, we decided to secure that in place and worry about the turbo to manifold connection later on. Usually you just get a torque setting and you just tighten it up to it. What this has is a degree torque. You go to a certain torque setting and then it says, now just go 90 degrees from that point. So what it means is I'm about to be very scared for the next 10 minutes. Join me as I snap the head. Luckily for me, the S3 was being tame for a second, but it didn't last long as our next job was to install the new timing belt, which turned out to be a hellish job. The timing belt just absolutely oh, just... refusing to go on. This guy right here is part of our engine mount. This part here hits against the belt. It needs the belt to move out the way. Um, but then at the same time, to install the timing belt, this needs to be out of the way. And you can't lift the engine up high enough to get it up and over this little hump. You can't jack it up that high or you start breaking things. Carl, you've done work on these before. There you go. Uh, <laughs> it's not fun, but the head is on. You've just got the timing belt in. It can all be put back in time. We can then just need to worry about the fact that the turbo doesn't fit on the head. 
here we are, maybe two hours later, in the same place. Kyle did a perfect job of putting it all together. We pulled the pin out of the tensioner, the tensioner went back in, it said, I'm ready to go, boys. And then we looked at the mark at the top of the engine that says, if those guys line up, you're ready to go. We looked, and it was that. It was one tooth off. We're back to square one. We had to take the tensioner back off, put the pin back in, put all of it back together so that we can now make sure that those two TDC marks, hello mate, that's the channel we are, go dunk and are correct. So we went through the whole ordeal we'd previously gone through all over again. And after many hours... Right. Come on, come on, come on. Ah, yes. Are we in? We're in. What's that mean? Uh, that that mean? means we may start the process. <laughs> yeah, that's what, that means we can begin putting the car back together. Today on Tuesday, it should be about 11 a.m. if we're on track. It's 6 p.m. What we're gonna do is we're gonna put the pulley back on the front of the engine and we're gonna manually turn the engine. If anything's gonna go wrong, it'll go wrong when we're doing it by hand. If we turn it and it goes bonk, that is those valves hitting the pistons, just like whoever used to own this car before, that same thing will have happened. Lucky for Edwin though, it seemed like the engine was finally in time. What's happening now? This is now put the car back together. Whee! Oh, sorry. Oh. When I say that, the turbo still doesn't fit. So that's the next thing. And that really was going to be a big issue. So Kyle and I worked late into the night trying our very best to connect the exhaust manifold and turbo with little success. We were meant to get both budget drag cars tuned first thing the next day, although there was no chance the S3 would be done in time. So I abandoned Edwin to try his best to get the car up and running. It's the next morning and the progress isn't that good. We are still basically where we were last night, albeit with a few extra bits and bobs that are done up. We found that the owner has done. Down behind the turbo is a support bracket. He's put that bolt in, but he's cross-threaded it in there. So now we can't get it out, which means the turbo cannot move forward to back, which means we can't mount it up to the manifold. So for us to be able to do anything, we have to get that cross-threaded bolt out. If we had known about this when the head was off, it would have taken five minutes, if not less. Will is on the way back from his tuning session, and he made 400 horsepower. This car has to go back together and it has to make at least 300 for us to be in with any chance at all. But right now, I'd be quite happy to just scrap it. Josh and I spent hours trying to get this simple bolt out, but it was near impossible as it was buried so deeply in the engine bay. Can I see the tool that you're using please? Oh, there it is. Oh, sorry, there. Oh, there it is. After hours and hours, we were finally making progress. The turbo finally mounted up to the head. Everything semi works. It's a little bit bodged, but it's gonna have to do because I'm at my wit's end with this car. I've connected up everything that it should need in order to start. I'm gonna go for a start up. Start, whoa, whoa, whoa! Oh no. Oh dear. That is quite a lot. We've tightened up what we think was just the turbo feed line, so we're gonna go for round two. And there's the smoke. You've done all right. That's just the first part done. Now I need to do everything else. So the next morning with Will back to help me, we finally got the S3 put back together. We have jumped forward a little bit. As you can see, it's now all back together. It went together without too much of an issue, but there are still problems with the car, but I don't care. I'm simply done with it. The other thing that you haven't seen, the intercooler that is now fitted to the car. Again, sorry, that was off camera. I, I do genuinely apologize for this video, but I've been in a pit of despair and filming is the last thing I've been thinking about. And Ben hasn't been here. It happens on these big jobs. Before I go and quickly check it, make sure it's fine and then drive it to the dyno, we have to see what that weight reduction is saying. I now know how much power Will is making. He's making 397 horsepower. Let's work out the power to weight ratio and work out what we need to be at to beat his car from just a numbers standpoint. You're making 245.82 horsepower per tonne. These are Adam from Evolution Auto Works' weighing scales. Thank you, as always, Adam, for letting us do stupid stuff with your equipment. Last time, we were 1,400 kilos on the dot, right, Will? Yeah, about that. Scales ready, we weighed the lightweight S3. Oh! 1278! 313 horsepower is what I need to make, unless there's got to be some more weight. Whoa, there's a sheet of paper in there. Oh, that needs to come out. Now with a target power level in mind, I needed to make sure the car was actually functioning properly. So I took it out for a test drive, which went about as well as I was expecting. Oh, it made boost, it sounded fine, but we had a very weird noise there. Almost a belt sounding squeal. I heard a really high pitched noise. Yeah, I'm a bit scared to do it again, but I think for the purposes of science, I probably should. 
Okay, uh, I'll see you at the end of the road then. Oh, I think we might have lost some boost. It is suddenly not as quick. So with that, we headed back into the unit once again to investigate the issue. Oh no. Oh no. Temp gauge is right in the middle, right in the middle. <laughs> oh. Just let it end. Just please let it end. After some investigating, we found the issue. There's a pipe that runs along the bottom of the block uh, underneath the inlet manifold that has appeared to just start pissing out. I did also notice it has got quite a bit louder. It's spat the gasket out between the turbo and the manifold. Can't do it. Can't. Inlet manifold off, the leaky pipe revealed itself. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. I've got an idea. That's the one. I like that more. I give up. At this point, I was actually completely done with this piece of shit Audi, but thankfully Josh wasn't. So he got us all going again and we managed to bodge it back together. It may not seem like much time has passed for you, but in reality, it's been three or four hours worth of bodging, messing around. And I can't take any credit, it's all Josh. Josh has taken over where <laughs> my body has given out and I just don't care anymore. Potentially leaking out the back of there. Oh. So that got chopped out and then we've had to Nice bit of bodge. Bodge. We're gonna have another go and start it up and see if it leaks. If it does leak, it will be leaking from just in there, somewhere in there. There you go, that's where the leak was and we've got nothing. So in theory we're fine. The coolant leak sorted, but the absolutely crazy exhaust blow that you can hear, that needs attention next because that I will be losing all my power from that. Josh, you've just said that you've pulled out the gasket. The center hole of the original one was a little bit smaller. So we put this one in to perhaps gain a little bit more flow, but back in with the original one. Hopefully it works. If it doesn't, that's another issue for me. Josh was struggling to get the gasket in. So we drafted in another helper. What's your straightaway go-to? Oh, I'm just gonna cut it all up. Yep, I just like it. Just gonna pop this in here and see if I can trim it. Everyone turns to violence almost instantly. Well, it's a Volkswagen Audi product, though you sort of have to really, don't you? Everyone kept trying, but this S3 wasn't done punishing us. <laughs> God, you, you bastard! This is shit. Finally, after much struggle, this is a shit car. It was sort of fixed. There's a bit of blood in, but it doesn't really matter that much. Yeah, put it back together, send it. Done. Hey, don't have to tell me twice. We're here at TRS Performance, finally, on Wednesday, the day that we had booked to be here, right? Yeah, a week later though. Oh, that's my bad. I just got the timings mixed up. I would have been ready, but we're here. We made it. It drove here lovely. Better than before, was it? No, sorry, I'm talking about when I drove the Cayenne with the S3 on the trailer. That's how the S3 made it here today, because I just don't trust this car. Because of how painful that car has been, we've lost track a little bit of what I've spent where, so let me give you a quick breakdown of what I've spent. The intercooler, £495. That was my biggest part of my budget. The exhaust manifold upgrade, that was £199.90. 99 pence, so 200 pounds. The injectors were 137 pounds, which isn't a bad deal, but I needed to spend another 35 pounds on adapters to allow them to run in the car. The new brakes, which you may or may not have seen in the video, but Will did install them for me, were 125 pounds. Thank you very much to Blueprint Parts for sending those parts out. Anytime you need OE matching quality parts, make sure you get some of those, check them out. Then, unexpectedly, because we had to take the head off, I had to buy a new head gasket, and all of the other miscellaneous parts, those cost me 250 pounds, which left me with 500 pounds left for the TRS remap. I would have really liked to get brand new tires, but we're out of budget. So this is how it's gonna have to be. Still under budget, four grand, done. We're here with Ned from TRS, and I can only apologize. Um, you enjoyed dynoing Will's car. Yeah, You probably bad. won't enjoy dynoing this. I've tried to remedy as many things as possible, and this is the dyno graph from the last time we dynoed it. It made 250 horsepower. Okay. But so when you say 24 PSI, is probably quite a lot of boost to be running for only 250 horsepower. It does seem a lot. Yeah. Um, it does seem a lot. So what I've done to try and remedy that, it had the standard intercoolers, yep. big intercooler, the standard exhaust manifold, we've replaced that, and also bigger injectors, because okay. it was running the standard small injectors. So all of those things along with a Chinese turbo should potentially make a bit more power. Hopefully. All we've done is scale in the injectors. All of the tuning is exactly as it was here and right. before. We'll see the difference that all those mods have done and then we'll tune it to get the most out of it. Let's see, 300, it's all I want. Sorry, survival, it's all I want. Smart man, Peter knows. Come on S3, just live. Oh, 
scariest run of all time. That card didn't pop and bang before. It didn't make pops and bangs before. We've done a good amount of dinos at this point, with some sketchy cars. I've never been as scared as I was just then. Car dinoed, Ned took us through the results. Ned keeps on walking, <laughs> just leaves. <laughs> all your work has actually improved it from last time, so that's yes. good. Now currently seeing 276. 276? 25 horsepower with no map. So that's just making the car breathe better. This is the data I'm looking at from the ECU while doing the runs. Mystery tune. Ignition timing, obviously it advances. And then you'll notice these numbers yep. are when I'm off throttle. Ah. It's got pops and bangs on it already. If it didn't do that before, but it's doing it now, potentially you had a leak or something, but now you've kind of fixed everything, it is doing what they've asked it to do. I know you said you saw higher boost before. I'm only seeing basically 1.45 bar, which kind of tallies up with the power and yeah. that sort of thing. So that's not as, yeah, that's not as big of a request for such a small amount of power. So that's exactly. good. So it's a bit more healthy. Yeah, intake temperature is very good, like yeah. sort of 21, 27 degrees at the end. So Will's car was almost triple that. Yes, so you've got a decent intercooler, whereas Will definitely didn't. This is wastegate juice cycle. This, right. this oh, is wow. how hard the turbo's trying. Yeah. We're seeing sort of 85, 87% right at the top. So there's not going to be a huge amount in it from, from turning up the boost, but we'll see what we can do. It is basically what he said. It's just a random ECU with a tune thrown on it, probably off the internet. Yeah. So with all this data, the guys from TRS went away and built me a map that would get as much as possible out of the S3. And there was a pretty exciting side effect too. <laughs> That's cool, I quite like that. After hours of tuning and countless runs, we had a final number. You've just come up to me and said, that's your lot. Yeah, so that is pushing the turbo as hard as it can. And that is the limit of ignition. It's starting to pull back just like ones and twos. So we're not gonna push it any further okay. than that. So turbo is really our, our limiting factor here. I wouldn't expect huge differences between the stock one and that, but. Perfect, great. But you did get 301. Yes, cracked into the 300s. That's not the furthest away from the number I need to be at the same power to weight as Will. I needed 310, 311. So if I can pull a bit more weight out, maybe when we're at the drag strip, ooh, I could be in with a chance. That's a 50 horsepower increase over the generic map. That's a... Yeah, and the torque is also significantly up as well. It's exactly 430 newton meters on the nose. That is a good result. It's a decent gain. It's going to be closer than you think, I reckon. You're 100 horsepower short, buddy. Doesn't matter. You're 400 kilos heavier. It's going to be a very good race. Thank you very much, as always, to TRS. As we've said before, they don't usually tune ship boxes like this. BMWs, Fords, newer Volkswagen, Audi stuff. Hit them up if you need a custom remap. It's going to be a good race. See you next week. If you want to subscribe, click here and click here to watch where Will got his car tuned and made 400 horsepower.